Hello and welcome to today's daily vlog from Kimmel Bay Church. Last time I prepared a vlog, it was to wish you a very happy Christmas. And now I think I'm just about in time to wish you every blessing for the new year. It's great to receive email greetings and best wishes for the new year. And this week I had one from a fellow trustee of a charity. He reminded me that God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. And to make this point, he shared the following. My minister worked out that Jesus' provision for the wedding at Canaan of Galilee was 1,092 standard UK bottles of wine. This is so much more than even the most determined drinkers could imagine and was, of course, the best to be served. He went on. May God's ridiculously generous and inexhaustible love flow in you and through you as to all as we try to serve him. Ridiculously generous and inexhaustible love of Jesus is something we all long to experience more and more. But it made me think, how well do we really know Jesus? It's been great to listen to Hugh's vlog a few days ago as I was preparing today's edition and I was struck by what he shared about the way people have strange ideas about Jesus generally based on very shaky evidence. As Hugh said to his fellow dog walker, there's much more to Jesus than the babe in Bethlehem or the dying figure on the cross. And the writer of the essential Jesus that we're following uh, picked up this theme by explaining what Niccolo Machiavelli, 1469 to 1527, said, criticising Jesus being so humble and meek that he would never really make an impact on the real world. And he wondered where did Machiavelli get his ideas from and thought he perhaps should have taken a look at today's reading, which is from Matthew 23, where Jesus shows his real opinion of hypocritical religion. I'm just going to read some of the opening words for Matthew 23, starting at verse 1. Then Jesus said to the crowd and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so you must be careful to do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, or they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honour and banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. You are not to call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. You are not to be called teachers, for you have one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus then goes on to pronounce seven woes in which he describes the religious leaders of the day as blind guides, fools, snakes, and a brood of vipers. Wow, pretty stern stuff. We need to remember that tension between Jesus and these leaders had been building all his earthly ministry. They did not like him healing on the Sabbath, eating with tax collectors and sinners, riding into Jerusalem, to the acclaim of the common people and most certainly not upsetting their nice trading centre in the temple. The scribes, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had begun a concerted effort to trick Jesus with their questions, but somehow Jesus always seemed to wrong foot them and this annoyed them all the more. For these religious leaders prided themselves as being holy men. There were only ever achieved a semblance of ho holiness because they could not match the look with their deeds. 
And this is the reason for Jesus' sermon, warning the crowd that they may listen to what these leaders say, because it's from scripture, but they must not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. It is this hypocrisy that angers Jesus. These religious leaders had missed the secret of holiness, which is complete harmony between God's priorities and our actions. Now, I'm not sure why, but this made me think about a stick of seaside rock. Yet yeah, really a stick of seaside rock, the sort that has the words clearly visible wherever you break the rock. If the rock is from Rill, then wherever you cut it, it clearly says Rill all the way through. But I remember the ones where when you cut it, you couldn't see what it said because the process had been flawed and all you're left with was a splurge of pink and white. Now, forgive me for this comparison, but Jesus, you see, is like that perfect stick of rock. He always practised what he preached and he never asked his disciples to do something he had not led the way in. Scripture says that yesterday, today and forever, Jesus is the same. So if he ate with sinners when he lived on earth, he would eat, he eats with sinners today. If he could answer the toughest question back then, he still can. If he was opposed to turning a place of prayer into a den of robbers, he's still opposed to it. And if it makes him angry that religious leaders said one thing and did another, then he's still angry today. And this is a challenge to us all personally, who say, yes, we are Christians. I find it very challenging. Jesus saying, do you practice what you preach? Or are you making it hard for those outside the faith to find me by your actions, drowning out your pious words? Praise be to Jesus that I can lean on his Holy Spirit to daily guide me into all truth. Because I have to admit, living a holy life is tough, especially when I think no one else is looking. I'm also encouraged by the end of today's passage, which I find one of the most haunting in all of scripture. This is Jesus, who has just talked about the hypocrisy of religious people, concluding his sermon with these tender words in verse 37. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how often I've longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicken under her wings, and you were not willing. This restores confidence that no one is beyond the love and invitation of our wonderful Lord Jesus, not even if we've been hypocritical religious in the past. Oh, that the world and we would always be willing to come to Jesus. Take time coming to him today and asking him to help you to make your words and deeds match and so then please him. It's been great to spend time with you. I hope you have a great day whatever you're doing and just want to say goodbye.